So Valve just decided to open up the next year with a banger. A new Steam Machine console that is heavily marketed as being a PC and lovingly named the GameCube by the community, a new Steam controller and a VR headset that probably has the best game compatibility out of all the ones that currently exist. And all of them, including the Steam Deck, have one thing in common. They all run on Valve's Arch-based SteamOS 3, a Linux operating system optimized to provide a console-like experience that is lighter and often even faster than Windows, fixes many of the quirks that other users are often experiencing and you can also use it as a desktop of course. Oh boy, I'm excited, because these releases hold much more in them than you might think. Let's get into it. This video was made possible by channel members of our community. If you want to participate in selecting new video topics, see what's going on behind the scenes and gain access to various tips and tricks, then please make sure to check out the join button or the link in the video description down below. Well someone needs to show the big boys how it should be done. Two new devices that come with Valve's Linux distribution SteamOS. And besides just the performance improvements and overall fixes that often make it more enjoyable, especially on handheld devices, I think that it has much more potential on this new hardware, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The new Steam Machine, a fully fledged computer that more or less also functions as a standalone console, is something that I shouldn't really be all that excited about, but I am. Steam Machines aren't something new. They have existed in the past, and while they did already come with a much older release of SteamOS, they never really captured the why for me. Like why should I buy a Steam Machine if I can just get a computer or an Xbox? With the new model however, this is slightly shifted for me, and here's why. First of all, the hardware. While the specs on the official website are not over the top and look kind of similar to my Tuxedo Stellaris Slim 15 based on the power draw, it is much more capable enough to run AAA titles. Sure, for some titles you might need to use FSR, but honestly I don't think it's a necessity for most and FSR has become really good, especially if you were to use a controller anyway, whereas quick flicking is not common. Then you get all the I.O. and connectivity options. DisplayPort 1.4 with daisy chaining meaning that if your monitor supports it, you can connect the second monitor through that one. However, you are of course often limited to lower refresh rates due to bandwidth limitations. And it also comes with an HDMI 2.0 port, which just like the DisplayPort one, supports HDR and FreeSync. I kind of wish that they would have included an HDMI 2.1 port, since there are ways so you can technically make them run on AMD hardware, you know, because of the open source problems with the HDMI forum, but yeah, for a second monitor or a TV it's more than enough. The Steam Machine also has plenty of USB-A ports. Then you get one USB-C port without any display output unfortunately, a microSD card slot for storage expansion and the AC power connector that unlike many others does not require an external power brick since the power supply is built in. Very often mini PCs with a similar form factor don't really have this and that is very nice for cable management. Oh, and wireless connectivity wise, I think I should also mention that they have a dedicated Bluetooth antenna. Much better, since shared ones often cause problems with the Wi-Fi. Okay, but all of that sounds pretty standard. Why am I getting so excited about this? Well, it's because that sort of hardware comes pre-built and optimized in this little box. A tiny machine with an exchangeable front plate, an LED strip that can be customized and it is Linux first, meaning that it will perform really great with many Linux distributions in general. For a consumer this is great. Sure, an enthusiast like myself probably wouldn't buy a Steam machine. We try to build a PC in this form factor. Maybe not one to one and maybe not in this exact more or less cube shape, but still great and probably cheaper. The problem for us, especially Linux users, is finding the right hardware for the job. Something that not only fits, but is also Linux compatible. And now we have a fully pre-built device that I can easily recommend to someone else that isn't all that technical. You know, if they're looking for a console or just a Linux gaming PC in general. Anyway, I find the Steam Machine, the GameCube, to be a great option for anyone that is looking to get a console. Let's just hope that at some point EA and the others come to their senses. The second piece of hardware that they released, besides the Steam controller of course, is the Steam Frame. A new VR headset that is incredibly light, offers a very high refresh rate of 120 and even experimental 144Hz, while a streaming and controller support and they have found a very interesting way to make the experience more enjoyable. 
The problem with many VR headsets is that when you start to look around, that the video bitrate, so essentially the quality of the video, can become better or worse, depending on where you currently are. Valve's attempt to make the experience better is by utilizing something they call foveated streaming. And it's basically prioritizing the parts of the headset screens that you're currently looking at. Since your eye needs to adjust for depth perception anyway, this is a great way to utilize less of the bandwidth for parts of the image that you're currently not directly focusing on, while keeping the image crisp for the parts that actually matter. I unfortunately didn't have a chance yet to test it myself, however, from what I've seen so far, it works really well. Best to wait for some in-depth and long-term reviews though. But all of that, besides maybe foveated streaming, didn't really excite me all that much. What I find really interesting is the standalone mode. The Steam Frame is not the first VR headset to basically be its own computer for light tasks or even some low demanding games. However, it is the first one to come with SteamOS and can therefore be used as a PC as well. That means that not only can you play light Steam games without needing a dedicated PC or laptop, you can also use it for desktop use cases that go beyond of what the Android based alternatives have to offer. Sure, it does have an ARM processor, which just like the Windows Snapdragon PCs could result in some incompatibilities, but Valve has heavily invested into an ARM compatibility layer called FAX that makes it possible to just like Proton make Windows games work on SteamOS, even with different processor architectures. There isn't really any footage out yet that shows the desktop mode working with this version of SteamOS, however it is stated on their website, so I guess that KDE Plasma will work just fine. But anyway. The standalone mode means that I can play light Windows games on something like a plane for example. Not just Android games, not just watch movies, but to actually play fully fledged PC games and honestly I find that pretty exciting. I have been thinking of getting a VR setup for quite some time now and this announcement is just perfect. The only thing that would still be interesting to know is how much they're going to charge for it. Or both actually because the Steam machine also doesn't have a price tag yet. I'm really excited though, and are you as well? Are you planning on getting the new Steam Machine or the Steam Frame or do you think they are just a waste of money? Please let us know in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. I really hope that you had a blast watching and that I'll see you in the next video. But up until then, all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.